Hello everyone, here's another Physics 30 example. This one is from Unit 3 on Electromagnetism and this is Lesson 2. Here we are uh, reviewing some of our graphing skills and this time we're doing some curve straightening. Uh, really important skill. Uh, one of the great things about physics is you can play around with graphs and manipulate graphs and they miraculously pop out laws for us and we can then interpret those laws and get some values but the skill of straightening a graph is key so let's take a look at this uh, example we have a circular motion experiment uh, so the period of rotation which is t is varied so this is let's just make a note of this this is the so t is being varied so this is the manipulated variable Okay, and if you're manipulating something, you're going to probably put it on the x-axis. That's pretty normal. Okay, you're going to manipulate something on the x-axis. Okay, so t is varied. That's the period of something spinning is going to be changed. The resulting speed is then measured. Okay, so v, this speed, actually it's not going to be, there's going to be no vector on that because it's just speed. The speed is measured. So this is the responding variable. Okay, and this is going to go on the y-axis. Okay, or the vertical axis. Okay, um, now we have a little relationship given to us. We're told that speed multiplied by period is equal to 2 pi r. Of course, 2 pi r being the circumference of a circle. And r is the radius. Okay, so let's just state the relationship between these variables. And then once we've done that, we'll sketch uh, the straightened curve um, and find out the units for the slope. So let's just start off by stating our graph. Okay, we're going to have, uh, obviously we have a y and an x. And we need to just state that to begin with, we're, we're going to be putting our... Our manipulated variable on the bottom and our responding variable on the vertical. So that just matches up with our, what we've said initially. Okay, so let's look at our formula and let's have a little look what's happening here. We're saying that V multiplied by T is equal to 2 pi R. Well, we want to have our Y axis completely on its own. In other words, the, the speed can only be on the, on the y-axis. So let's just go ahead and rearrange this equation for v. Okay, so we're going to take this and rearrange for v. So speed is equal to 2 pi r over t. Okay, and so that gives us a relationship between the y and the x parts of our graph. So let's just split this up. This this is my this is my y part of my graph. And the 2 pi r, these are all just constants. So let's let maybe just make a statement over here for that as well. 2 pi r, these are constants. They're not going to change. So I'm just going to call that a 1. Okay, I'm going to just say that the constant is equal to 1. And then that's going to be over my period, the t, which is going to be on the x-axis. So I've got a little statement here that's mathematical form. Um, I'm saying that y is equal to 1 over x. And that means I can rewrite my relationship in a graphical sense. I've already said that my y-axis is going to be my responding variable, which is this. Now I'm just going to go ahead and put it in as v. So v is on my vertical axis and my manipulated variable is on the x-axis is t. So what is this graphical relationship going to give us? Well this is something you're going to need to uh, I guess memorize. This is a, an inverse relationship. So it's going to give us a graphical shape that looks like this. A hyperbolic relationship. Okay now that's great. But what we need to do is straighten it because any curvy, wavy graphs aren't very good at predicting. Whereas a straight line graph is beautiful at predicting. So we want to turn this 
into a straight line. And here's the here's the key. This graphical shape, which we've used to predict, now becomes essentially an instruction. It says, do this and you will get a straight line. So I'm going to do exactly what it's telling me. I'm going to go ahead and follow this instruction. I'm not going to do I'm not going to do anything to the Y. So my Y stays the same. In other words, it's still V. But my X axis needs to be inverted or reciprocated, I guess. So my X axis is one over T. Okay, and if I do that, I should get a straight line. And that's the key. That's the important skill. Okay, next thing is to then think about what the slope is giving us. So this next part of the example is saying, explain how to determine the radius. So now we're actually getting something out of our data. We're gonna get a value for the radius. Okay, so maybe we didn't know that in our experiment. Now we're gonna solve for this radius using our graph. Okay, now we will obviously be using our slope. So now we have a straight line. This, this is going to give us a slope, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And we know how to do that. It's going to give us a value. What we need to do is keep track of the, the units and keep track of how this matches with not only our line shape, our graphical shape, which is y is equal to mx plus b, but also our equation which is vt is equal to 2 pi r. So again, we're going to try and link these two things together. So let's think about what the slope gives us. The slope is going to give us, in this case, we can just look at the units for y and the units for x. The units for y are, well, it's, it's velocity. So it's, we'll just put it in as v. And that's going to be over... 1 over t. So in other words, vt. Okay, let's look at the units just for fun. Uh, velocity is in meters per second divided by 1 over seconds. Well, that means we have meters seconds over seconds. This cancels out, which means we have a unit in meters. Our slope is going to give us a unit in meters. That's convenient because we're trying to find, remember, we're trying to find the radius. The radius obviously is going to be a distance or a value in meters. Okay, so there's sort of two different ways to think about this. Uh, first of all, we can, we can use this direct value for slope and think about this as, 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 as its own separate entity, right? So we can say that the slope value is equal to vt. Well, in our equation, vt is equal to 2 pi r. So we can just extend this and say that the slope is equal to 2 pi r. And so slope divided by 2 pi is going to give you r. And you can solve. Go ahead. The other way to do it is to look at the graphical shape. This y is equal to mx plus b. And try and map this. So we're going to try and map this and this together. So what do I mean by that? Well, I'm going to look for the y part of my graph, which is v. Okay. I'm going to look for the x part of my graph. Okay. The x part of my graph, which is 1 over t. So this is 1 over t. Now I can discount the plus b, in other words, it's going to be a plus zero, because if I look back to my formula, I don't have any pluses or minuses going on in here, so I don't need to worry about that. I'm just going to now say that the rest of this equation, if I rearrange it, the rest of this equation is going to be equal to the slope. So let's just rearrange this to solve for v. So v is equal to 2 pi r over t, which is just the same as writing 2 pi r multiplied by 1 over t, right? It's the same thing. And so hopefully you can see that this 
1 over t is already taken care of, so the, the m must be 2 pi r. Okay, and look at this. We've got to the same conclusion. We've said that the slope is equal to 2 pi r. We got that from look, just looking at our slope uh, independently. So we get to the same solution. Slope divided by 2 pi is equal to r.